the first time I came to 145th, I'd heard lots of stories about Harlem, so I jumped on a train and it was the middle of winter and as an Australian, that's a whole new experience for me. I, I met someone who lived in these buildings. He said that I could come and stay and I ended up in a six floor walk up in Harlem. I didn't want to bring my children up in the city. So after they got grown, I said, babe, we can go to Manhattan now. And we've been here for 20 years. It was really lovely to be here. It was very affordable. I would have been devastated if my lease wasn't renewed. And I got pretty used to the sixth floor walk up. Mind you, I don't think I bought milk for the first year. It was just too much to carry up. <laughs> When we first moved here, it was nice. And this building and that building were the best building on this block. I used to have a long dining room table from here all the way up by the door. And every Thanksgiving, that table would be set with a big turkey in the center, and we have a gathering for family. I became part of the board because I felt that this was the only home that I had. When you don't have family very close, to me, I felt more at home here than I did at my other home. Both of these buildings are over 100 years old, and uh, they wasn't kept up properly. Then they went downhill like that. It was kind of like the perfect storm of old things that needed to be upgraded, and we just got hit with everything at the one time. And our beautiful boiler, she'd done such a good job, but she was struggling. It was a nightmare. In the blizzard, it went out for five days. We didn't have the heat because the boiler went down. We stayed in this apartment. It was hard. It was really hard. I had a big meeting to go to. I can't take a shower. It's freezing. I have to wash my hair. There's no hot water. There's no heat. And then the phone calls start. We got no hot water. 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 I don't have any heat. Do you have any heat? I don't have any heat. It, it was, was cold it was at bad. night. We had to sleep with clothing Clothes. on, you know, uh, two or three a couple pairs of blankets socks. and stuff like that. We put the oven on to improve the, the comfort, the heat of the apartment. But we couldn't but, uh, keep it up all night because we couldn't keep no stove on all night. We figured like if we let it stay on all night, which you're not we supposed to mm -mm. do, we didn't do that. it's a very dangerous thing, you know. I thought sure we we're gonna be had to be getting out of here, but. I think at the end of the day, everybody knew that we needed a new boiler. The question was, how do we do it and how do we get it with the funds that we have? A new boiler cost $90,000. We didn't have $90,000 in our account. We were very fortunate in that we had some very proactive board members who had gone out to find different weatherization programs. We got a new boiler, and we was around here shouting. We were just jumping up and down. Thank God, we got heat. Every single apartment got beautiful, high-tech windows that would lower their energy bills. So not just for the building, but for each resident. Got a new refrigerator. They even put a handicapped bathroom in there for him. Everybody got new insulation door sweeps. We got a grant from Con Edison to put in energy efficient lights. I don't think you can ever underestimate the joy of hot water until you have none. I only really need a cup of coffee and a hot shower and when you don't have that hot shower and it's the middle of winter, it's really not very nice. <gasps> She's so pretty! I haven't really seen her very much. Ah! I never used to look like this. <laughs> it's so lovely now. Our weatherization program was really about upgrading all of the elements of our building that were really hurting us in our operating expenses. If you have an outdated boiler, it's costing you twice as much to run in oil. If you don't have insulation, it's costing you twice as much to heat. It's about the efficiency of your building and how well it runs so that you're not wasting money on inefficient systems. It's 100% better than it was. I like, we like it now, we enjoy it much better. And it's gonna get better than this. 
For us, a very big thing has been what other programs can we be a part of? So we're looking at solar energy right now. We're looking at a roofing program. We just put in for a DEP water program. It's much more cost effective to provide those kind of programs than to have 70 people homeless or not being able to live here or not being able to contribute to New York City. We have dug in here now and you know, we have uh, got our roots here now. We just celebrated our 50th anniversary. We had it like a church, right? In the living room. It was the chairs sit just like church. And now uh, when I come out, I had to come out from back there and to center the floor. And him and our son standing over there, the pastor standing right where the refrigerator is. My motto has always been honoring the past, securing the future. You know, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the people in 1982 who set up the co-op. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the people before us who volunteered their time on the board. But it's also our job to make sure that we're securing everything so that not only people from 1982 are still here, but in 50, 100 years, we're still able to provide the same opportunities that we get here now to the next generation. That's our son. That's Bill's mother. That's our daughter. And she graduated. This is home. And we both will get walk, walk, go, and I wouldn't say walk out of here. Go out of here with a, in a box. <laughs> That's the way I want it. That's the way we want it, rather.